Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 24. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. What you're going to learn today is called the debt redo. We're going to talk about redoing your debt. And you'll learn why I disagree with the debt snowball what the limitations are I think that it has, how to improve your credit while paying off debt, and how to reduce your interest charges. So the popular teaching today is debt is bad and that you're supposed to pay off all your debt, including your mortgage, any type of debt. And not only is that wrong, but it's directly opposite of how millionaires often create their wealth. You may remember the phrase, other people's money, or OPM for short. And it's an important wealth building principle to use other people's money to borrow from banks or credit card companies or individuals and create wealth. Why? Because the way you build wealth is to compound at high rates of return and debt increases your rate of return. So this is the example I always use, but it's very simple to understand and to do the math. Let's say you buy a home for $100,000 cash with no debt and it increases in value in a year by $10,000. You've gained $10,000 on a $100,000 investment. That's a 10% annual return. Now compare that to your friend who also bought a home for $100,000, but instead of paying cash, put only 10% as a down payment and borrowed 90% with a mortgage. The house appreciates by $10,000 in a year, same thing. But since they only put down $10,000 and made a $10,000 gain, that's a 100% return or 10 times the return you had on your house. The significance of that is not only has your return increased by 10 times, but if you were able to start with only $10,000 to invest and you could possibly do that each year, in a little over seven years, you'd be a millionaire, which is why a lot of wealth has been created with real estate. It's because of the leverage. And because we've had a real estate boom due to baby boomers, of course, buying a lot of housing, but the leverage has increased their rate of return and made their wealth building happen sooner for them. The power of compounding is enhanced by leverage and it's powerful if you use it for appreciating assets, right? Not depreciating ones. That's where people get it wrong. They use debt for depreciating assets like clothes or cars, trips, RVs, and other grown-up toys that lose value over time. Here's my point. It's really buying the depreciating assets, not the debt, where you're going wrong. Debt is a powerful tool for wealth building if used correctly. If used incorrectly for buying stuff, of course it's going to hurt you. If you've built up your credit cards with a bunch of nonsense stuff that's not worth anything, absolutely, that's the wrong thing to do. You can't just go out and get debt for the sake of getting debt. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying if you use debt wisely for appreciating assets, it's not the villain. It's a wealth building tool and it's not bad in and of itself. Let me ask you this. Why is it that credit is good, but debt is bad? In other words, it's great to have good credit, but the moment you use the credit, it's bad? It's not about the debt or the credit, it's how you use it. And if you're using it properly, then it's a skillful tool that's going to build your wealth. But if you use it improperly to buy depreciating assets like cars, clothing, designer handbags, whatever, that's where you're going to get problems with debt. That makes sense? But some experts talk about getting out of debt completely. And they say, pay off your credit cards, you know, save for college, pay off your house, and then save for retirement. And I'm thinking, there's no way you're going to have enough money for to save for retirement if you pay off your house before you start saving for retirement, or even if you're doing it at the same time. There's no way you should pay that amount of money in cash and have it in your house. There's no reason for that. And I think that's a really big mistake. 
You'll never be able to accumulate enough for retirement if you're going to pay off your house first. So don't pay off your house first. That's why houses are on payment plans and they're often fine on a payment plan. You know, I believe that you should pay an extra payment per year to pay off your house early. That'll save you seven years approximately off of your mortgage if you make one extra payment per year or one twelfth extra payment per month. And that's the way to, to get your house paid down sooner. But don't focus on paying off your house debt before your retirement. I think that's a huge mistake. To be a good wealth builder, you need to know how to use debt skillfully. That's what millionaires do. They understand debt and credit to the nth degree. And now that you know that debt can be good when used to increase the rate of return on an appreciating asset, let's talk about how to get you out of credit card debt. Because a lot of people are stuck, unfortunately, with credit card debt that's been used for the wrong reasons. What you've been taught about how to pay off credit cards is also not correct. You don't want to pay off your smallest balances first. It's not only the most costly method, it will also hurt your credit score. Why? Keeping the largest balances of debt the longest is the worst possible thing you can do to your credit. How would you like to improve your credit score while paying off your consumer debt? Let me show you how. Now, let me before I go into that, let me just reiterate this. If you're paying your smallest balances off first and you're leaving your largest balance credit cards, what's happening is your credit is not improving. Your credit is still damaged to the max degree, the nth degree, because you're maxed down on your credit cards. It's only when you get your credit cards paid down by half of the maximum that your credit will start to improve. So by paying your smallest balances first, you're leaving your improving credit score until the last minute. So you're not improving your credit score even though you're paying off your debt. What you wanna do is start with the largest balances and pay them down to halfway. That will be improving your credit score while you're paying off debt. And oh, by the way, of course, if you can pay off the highest interest rate first, that will also save you money. But to improve your credit while you're paying off debt, you want to pay down your maxed out balance to half of the balance. So let's say the maxed out rate is it was $20,000 was your credit line. If you can get that paid down to $10,000, that is going to dramatically improve your credit score while you're continuing to pay off your debt. If, however, you leave that $20,000 of maxed out credit on that card while you're paying off a little $2,000 balance over the next six months, you're not doing anything to improve your credit over that six month period of time because of that maxed out card. You've got to get the maxed out card down to half. Does that make sense? So that's how this way you're going to improve your credit score while you are also paying down your debt. All right, so here you're going to take a piece of paper horizontally and create six columns. In column number one, you'll have the credit card name, the bank name. In column number two, the balance that you owe in, 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 sorry, in column number three, the maximum credit limit. So let's say you owe 10,000, that's column two. Column three is the maximum credit limit, that's 20,000. Column four, the ratio of debt to credit. So your 10,000 over 20,000 is 50% is your ratio of debt to credit. Number five is the interest rate. Number six is the minimum payment. So again, column one, credit card name, column two, the balance, column three, maximum credit limit, column four, ratio of debt to credit, number five, interest rate, and number six, minimum payment. Fill in all the rows and columns with your debt information. And this, by the way, is written in my blog post over at bewealthyandsmart.com forward slash blog. It's under everything you why everything you learned about debt is wrong is the name of the article over there. So it's all written down for you over there. Number two, for column number four, it's an easy calculation. You take your debt balance, which is column two, divided by the maximum credit limit, which is column four. So let's say you had debt on two credit cards, card A and card B. If you owed $4,000 on card A and it has a credit limit of $10,000, 
that's 4,000 divided by 10,000 is 0 0.4, 40%. 0.4. And on card B, you owe $4,000, and it has a credit limit of $5,000. That's 4,000 divided by 5,000 equals 0.8%, or 80% maxed out. Then you rank the cards with the largest ratios first. In our example, you'd rank card B with 0.8, above card A, which was 0.4. Pay more on the card with the largest debt ratio, the 0.8, and the minimum on the lower card ratio, the one that had 0.4. When you lower your credit card ratio to 0.5 from 0.8, your credit score will improve. That's just part of the algorithm that credit card companies use. And continue doing this until your debt ratio gets to 0.5 on your cards. It will take some time to complete this, but when you have, go to the last step. And that is go to column five and rank it by the highest interest rate. So once you've paid them down by half, then go back and pay them off by highest interest rate next. And that will save yourself the most money and improve your credit score while you're doing it. Is it worth it? Yes. By paying according to the debt ratio, you'll be improving that credit score which will allow you to pay off your debt and buy a home or refinance a debt or buy an appreciating investment sooner so you can get your wealth building back on track. So that's how it's done. And it should be done to get your payments, get your balance down to half of what the maxed out rate is. Now, the other thing you can do is you can also contact your credit card company through a credit counselor. If you, for some reason, don't have as much income as you used to have, or you have other issues, you can talk with a credit counseling company. They have pre-negotiated interest rates that are lower, and they will allow you to pay back your debt at that lower rate. So for example, let's say you had a Visa card at 15% interest, and you worked with a credit counselor, they could get Visa an already pre-negotiated rate through Visa they might have at 6%. And your interest rate would go from 15% to 6%. What would that cost? Well, it's a small fee that you would have to pay to the credit counseling company for having negotiated that. Uh, you would not be able to use your credit card, but as long as it's maxed out, you're not able to use it anyway. But they don't close the card, so it doesn't hurt your credit score in most cases. I can't promise that, but usually if you're paying the full balance and they're just reducing the interest, it generally won't hurt your credit score. If you're trying to cancel out a debt and not pay off the debt, then you will get a ding on your credit score. But if you're paying the full balance, but you're just lowering the interest from 15% to 4% that the counseling company has already negotiated with Visa, there's not usually a ding on your credit report. So you can dramatically increase your ability to pay off your card by reducing your interest charges. Also, you can improve your credit score while you're paying off your debt. And that is how I believe the proper way is to pay off the debt that will be most to your advantage. So your action step for today is to create your debt chart. All right, go to my blog post at bewealthyandsmart.com forward slash blog and read why everything you've learned about debt is wrong. And you'll see the six columns. Again, column one is the credit card name, two is the balance, three is the maximum credit limit, four is the ratio of debt to credit, that's the crucial one, five is the interest rate, and six is the minimum payment. And you fill those in for each of those and you're going to take the balance over the credit limit, figure out the ratio and pay it down to 0.5%. Once you've paid it down to 0.5%, you've been improving your credit, congratulations. You've been actually improving your credit score while you've been paying off your debt, which doesn't work when you're only paying off the minimum balance and you're leaving your maximum balances out there. So you've got to address the maximum balances, pay them down to half. That, my friends, is going to increase your credit score while you're paying off your debt. You're making headway with bringing your credit score up. And that is a good thing. 
So do this spreadsheet and create these columns and you'll have your debt paid off in no time, you'll have your credit report repaired in no time, and you'll have a much happier, healthier situation with debt. From that point on, you wanna be very aware of how you use debt, only using it for appreciating assets, not depreciating assets, and making sure that you're being really smart with debt. But in and of itself, there's nothing evil about debt. Nothing evil about it, it's a tool. And it's a tool that's a blessing to you when you buy your home, it makes it more affordable for you. When you buy a car, it makes it more affordable. I'm not a big fan of car loans. I usually recommend paying cash for cars, uh, but I do believe that there is a place for debt and it does improve your rate of return if you're buying appreciating assets. So think differently about debt, change your mindset. It's not something that you have to get rid of. You certainly don't have to pay off your house before you save for retirement. I think that would be a big mistake. So think about uh, saving for retirement and staying with some kind of mortgage on your house. As long as you're able to afford the payments and your income looks good, there should be no problem with that. So just a little bit of a different way to think about debt and to understand how you can actually improve your credit while you're paying off the debt, which I think is really important and really overlooked. So if you're eager to start on the first step to wealth, your wealthy mindset, go over to my website, bewealthyandsmart.com and sign up for 21 days to a wealthy mindset. That's emails, videos, audios, and information to help you change your thinking from lack to wealth in 21 days. How you think is the foundation for everything else we're doing. So get started now removing your limiting beliefs. That's BeWealthyAndSmart.com. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.